Starting soon, the Monday Market Highlights podcast will be exclusively available on Milford's new podcast channel called On Track with Milford. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out on any episodes. You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 7th of August and I'm Roland from Milford. The RBA held their monthly committee meeting and decided to hold rates steady for a second straight month. Although there was less than a 10% chance of a rate hike at this meeting, the market still took the news positively. The RBA's commentary was marginally more dovish, but admit that more tightening may be needed. They also released their quarterly statement of monetary policy, which essentially highlights all the indicators they're monitoring, including a range of economic forecasts. These forecasts were little changed from a quarter ago but they did reinforce the two risks they see to increasing inflation, which are rising rents and the risk of labour productivity not improving like they expect. China and Australian relations continue to improve, with China dropping the barley tariffs. As a reminder, they imposed these tariffs in 2020 in relation to the Australian government supporting an investigation into the origins of COVID. It is estimated exports of barley to China were around 1.2 billion Australian dollars. In the US, the June core PCE index was released, which showed this measure of inflation continuing to moderate. Core PCE increased 4.1% year-on-year, compared to 4.2% expected and 4.6% in May. On a month-on-month basis, prices increased 0.2%, slowing from 0.3% in May. This is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. The Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey was released and jumped to 71.6 from 644 the highest level since October 2021. This did slightly miss expectations, however highlights the increasing optimism in the US, which is unsurprising given lower gasoline prices and higher equity markets. A reading of below 100 does remain pessimistic, however. Also in the US, ISM manufacturing data was released, which was slightly softer than expected at 46.4 versus 46.8 anticipated. It did, however, marginally improve month on month. A reading below 50 implies contracting manufacturing activity. This survey has implied contraction since November 2022. Finally in the US, the monthly jobs data was released, which had something in it for the bulls and the bears. Total jobs added missed expectations, coming in at 182,000, slightly weaker than anticipated. However, this could arguably be offset by higher than expected wage growth of 0.4% month on month and a tighter unemployment rate of 3.5%. Turning to equity news, the ACCC has blocked the sale of Suncorp's banking arm to ANZ. They were fearful it may lessen competition, and in their actual words, they weren't satisfied it wouldn't lessen competition. Most believe their argument is tenuous, and hence ANZ are going to challenge the decision through the courts. ResMed released their second quarter earnings, which missed consensus by about 7%. The strong revenue result was overshadowed by a weaker gross profit margin and higher OPEX. Investors were led to believe gross margins were improving, so the market was particularly disappointed in this result. It would have been flat if not for an FX headwind, however, the lack of it increasing was also put down to product and geography mix. ResMed fell 10% on the day, however, fell another 20% in the US on Friday night, albeit that's quite an illiquid market. TPG Telecom confirmed speculation around the potential sale of some of their assets to Vocus, who is owned by Macquarie Infrastructure. The scale of the transaction was a surprise to the market, as they are considering selling their entire enterprise government and wholesale business, the company infrastructure, and what sounds like most of their fibre, for $6.3 billion Australian dollars. They'd be left with their mobile business, their macro towers, and the Indian reselling division. TBG rallied 11.5% of the day, although gave back some of this throughout the week. Credit Corp released their full year results, which came in line with consensus. The FY24 guidance, however, disappointed, coming in 10% below expectations, which saw their share price fall 12.5% on the day. Looking to the week ahead, Australian reporting season will be ramping up progressively through August, which will provide great insights into how companies are managing these tricky economic conditions. US inflation data will be released, with economists expecting 0.2% month-on-month inflation for both core and headline data. In addition, PPI will be released for July, and economists are also expecting a 0.2% monthly increase. In the UK, second quarter GDP data will be released, with the market expecting 0.2% annual growth, 
However, June specifically is expected to increase at a stronger 0.5% year on year. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, this podcast is moving to Milford's new podcast channel. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out.